And we now turn to the Minister for Employment and Learning, and I call Martin O'Meara. Question number one. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Uh, with your permission, I wish to group questions one and two, and would like to request a, an additional minute for the answer. Members are aware from my statement of 1 July 2014 that the, the International Panel completed its review and delivered its report aspiring to excellence on initial teacher education infrastructure in Northern Ireland. The, the, the report proposed four options for future structures which could move us towards a world-class standard of teacher education. They are a collaborative partnership, a two-centre model with the Belfast Institute of Education and the second centre based in, in the North West, a Northern Ireland Teacher Education Federation and a Northern Ireland Institute of Education. As a first step towards engagement with the sector during September, I met with the four providers, Queen's, Tramillus, Mary's and Ulster University to hear their views. The meetings were constructive and engagement will continue as we consider how best to align the views put forward by the institutions with those of the international panel. I would, however, remind members that both reviews of, teacher, uh, of initial teacher education confirm that the status quo is not an option for the future delivery of initial teacher education. The issue of, finance, of the financial sustainability of the current structure has become more pressing now that as a result of the budget, my department faces budget cuts, which will necessitate difficult decisions on a range of functions and services across the department and arm's length bodies. It is in this context that I have advised Mary's and Stramidis that I plan to remove the small and specialist institution premia funding from the, the, the beginning of the 2015-16 academic year. The Aspiring to Excellence report provides alternatives to the current infrastructure, alternatives which could enable initial teacher education to, to be delivered in a more cost-effective way and to a world-class standard. In my view, the options which best achieve these criteria would seem to be options B, a two-university approach, or D, a single institution. And I have written to the initial teacher education providers requesting they develop proposals to structure teacher education along these lines. I plan to meet with each of the, of the providers this month to discuss their views. I would also firmly uh, reiterate my, that my main aim in this process continues to be how we can best structure a system that can deliver world-class standards of teacher education one that's financially sustainable, promotes greater sharing and integration, and is in the best interests of our young people. I call Martin Amelior. Uh, I got a last one, uh, Thank you, Deputy uh, Speaker. Um, I wonder, would the Minister, uh, and he was very frank in his answer, would he accept uh, that the removal of the premium will lead to the closure of St Mary's uh, University uh, College? Uh, would he accept that this will be the biggest body blow to the area of Hast unemployment in Belfast in a generation? If St Mary's uh, does close, and would he let me I know think the what, has asked what economic question. impacts are these carried out? Thank you, Minister. Well, I, I would recognise that the impact uh, would be significant uh, on St Mary's, and that this is a serious issue for them. Though I wouldn't necessarily f f uh, assume that it means the, the closure of St Mary's. But this context is happening in, the, in, the, in a situation where we already know that our teacher infrastructure in Northern Ireland is very fragmented. Uh, it is costly, much more costly than comparative systems uh, elsewhere in the world. And we're not, we're not actually reaching our full potential either in terms of the, the, the standard and linkages, particularly with, uh, with research. So there's a, a real prize here in terms of, of reform. And I believe that through a process of engagement, including St Mary's, that we can find agreement on a way forward that does look to issues such as the future provision of higher education in West Belfast, that also takes into account the different needs of the education sector in Northern Ireland and stress that that type of, of, uh, of, of point and perspective can be accommodated through a range of different institutional uh, formats. So I think that there is uh, the opportunity uh, for discussions amongst all the providers to find a consensus on what is a better way forward, not just for institutions, but primarily for the future teachers of Northern Ireland and, as a consequence, the future students who will go through our school system. I call Alistair MacDonald. Thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. And could I thank the Minister for his answer so far? But could I remind the Minister that St Mary's has produ produced a very high standard of quality education for generations? that many of us believe that St Mary's and Strambillis can provide, or an institution of that sort can provide, a significant contribution. We don't have enough university third-level education places. And, you know, there's, there is much to be achieved. Shutting it down is not a, a, a sensible option, in my question. opinion. 
but has the Minister moved in any way to facilitate talks or promote a better or stronger uh, partnership or working relationship between St Mary's and Strongmills? There's quite a, quite a few things in that uh, series of questions, um, Mr. Mr. Deputy Speaker. Let me say, from the, from the, from the, from, from the back, starting from the back, yes, um, we are engaged in discussions and we are promoting uh, discussions between the different providers uh, on a way forward. But again, I, I am disappointed, as with the, the, uh, the, the questions that have come forward on this, that we're taking this uh, issue from the perspective of institutions rather than the welfare and future interests of the teacher uh, profession, uh, teaching, teaching profession in Northern Ireland and the future interests of students. And while, of course, uh, Stranmillis and St Mary's have been successful uh, in, in their own right, uh, we can aspire to do so much better. And that's uh, the, 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 the main argument that is contained within the Aspiring to Excellence report. And I would certainly encourage Dr McDonnell and others to read that report and to see where the capacity does exist in Northern Ireland for a much improved uh, situation. And let me also be very clear in relation to this issue around the, the premium. Uh, it is not my intention to use this uh, to, to force through uh, some agenda. We want to have uh, discussions uh, with the, the providers around the way forward. The context for the discussions around the Premier lie in the fact that we have a very challenging budget situation and we continue to have a very challenging budget situation, notwithstanding the additional allocations announced by the Finance Minister earlier on uh, today. And on a fixed budget, I have a very stark choice to make. It is between the protection of frontline places which, which means places in our universities and colleges across Northern Ireland, or preserving subsidies that I don't, do not believe are warranted. So whenever people make the case for the premia that goes to, to those teacher education colleges, they are also making the case that I withdraw money from the front line, and mean, which means that some of our students in Northern Ireland will not have the opportunity to attend a university or college here and to pursue their career here, which will damage our economy and also undermine their life opportunities. So that's a very stark choice that, that, that lies ahead of us, and people should be very mindful of that when they're making the arguments that they're making today. I call Robin Swan. Opportunity to push through his agenda in regard to But will he not agree the Grant Thornton report and to the financial future of both teacher training colleges so showed that the small college premium was crucial for their existence post 2015? And we also agree that anybody who supports the budget as proposed, where he's removing that small premium, is actually signing the death knell of St Mary's on Stranmillis. Well, People shouldn't be talking in terms of the death knell of any institution at this stage. That is not what this process is about. This is a process about trying to find an agreed way forward for the, the institutions. Now, the issue about the premium being a subsidy has been very clear in the eyes uh, of the Assembly and, and indeed others uh, since the Grant Thornton report. And we could have proceeded on, at any stage uh, to withdraw the premium if we were int intent on using it as, as a lever. The fact is that we have to make choices now in the context of the budget, and that's the basis on which we're approaching this issue. However, due to the fact that we have conducted the Grant Thornton report, due to the fact that we have the Aspiring to Excellence report, we now have a very clear basis to formulate an alternative whereby we can mitigate the effect of the budget and provide a means by which we can address the interests of the education, sector in, education sectors in Northern Ireland and also the, the, our requirements for the future training of teachers. And we have that opportunity and I urge all the institutions and indeed wider stakeholders to seize that, to seize that opportunity. I call Anna Lowe. Deputy Speaker, given what the Minister has said about the financial constraint and, and the interest of everybody, what is his vision for teacher training in Northern Ireland? Well, it's important um, to, to bear in mind that the Aspiring to Excellence report is not something that's, that's uh, founded around the issue of resources and a, a means to find a more efficient way of delivering teacher training. That's something that's very clearly out there uh, due to the financial situation we find ourselves in. But there are other drivers of change, and the primary one lies in terms of driving up standards taking on board what is international, international best practice in terms of the institutional format of, of teacher education and recognising that most uh, modern teacher education systems are very clearly linked to university-based research. 
And that's perhaps a linkage that we're not fully developing in Northern Ireland. And that will provide a much more rounded product in terms of our future teachers, which in turn will benefit our future uh, students going through schools. Moving on, I call Alex Easton. Mr Deputy Speaker. Uh, even with the allocations to my department in the final budget, Dell is still facing an unprecedented level of cuts. These will have an impact right across the areas of work of my department, including further education. At this stage, I am unable to provide the, the definitive position on the impact of the revised budget on the further education sector, but the impact of the cuts proposed in, in the draft budget were set out in my department's draft savings delivery plan. However, it is inevitable that frontline services will be detrimentally affected, including both staff losses and a significant reduction in student places. Such cuts in further education provision would be, would be perverse at a critical time when Northern Ireland needs to expand rather than reduce the supply of skilled workers to employers in preparation for a, po for a possible introduction of a lower level of corporation tax. Once the further education budgets are finalised, my officials will, com will communicate this information to the colleges to enable them to plan for the 2015-16 academic year and beyond. Undoubtedly, difficult choices will have to be made in the weeks ahead. I call Alex Easton for supplementary. Could I thank the Minister for his answer? And I'm not sure he's going to be able to answer this. But um, could the Minister maybe uh, outline how the newly agreed budget would enable the Minister to deliver on programmes for apprentices, apprenticeships in North Down? Well, well, first of all, um, with respect to apprenticeships and also the system of youth training, um, the department um, was successful in a bid to the change fund to the tune of about seven and a half million and certainly I would put on record uh, my gratitude both to the finance minister and the, the executive for agreeing uh, that allocation. That is a major uh, strategic uh, investment uh, in the future of this economy as well as in the future of, of, our, of our young people. Obviously our further education colleges uh, will be a key uh, delivery partners in that regard, so there will be some assistance to them in, in that regard. On top of that, of course, uh, some element of the 20 million, um, either additional resources or reallocation of resources, depending upon your perspective, uh, will be used to offset the current uh, proposed impact of the cuts on further education. But we have to bottom out precisely what that means in practice over, over the coming weeks. And it is my intention to try to have this uh, finalised in terms of the budget for the next uh, financial year, probably within about two weeks from now. I call John McAllister. The Minister, in his earlier reply, talked about the difficulties between maximising any benefits from corporation tax and, and of course, funding it. Does he not think that, uh, how does he um, secure um, the future of, of colleges, the southeastern one and, and campuses like Downpatrick, while implementing that, implementing cuts, not raising uh, any money from any other point? Will it not be time for him to join us in opposition before his department is abolished? Um, I'm not sure who Mr McAllister means by us, because I thought he was a, a lone voice these days as, as, a, as an independent, but I'm not sure if he's formed another party in the past uh, couple of minutes and we've missed that. Um, but let, let me say uh, very clearly, I believe that um, I best understand the interests of my department and the arm's length bodies. Um, I'm best placed to make the case uh, for additional resources. I'm also best placed to manage the resources that are available to get the greatest impact, and that is my current, current intention in, in that regard. However, he mentions about corporation tax, and let me be, be very clear. There is not a simple choice to be made between, on the one hand, funding a lower level of corporation tax uh, and, and taking money out, out of the skills budget. The two have to go hand in hand. And while we have some degree of mitigation in terms of the, of the budget for the, for the current year, simply having a standstill situation around uh, places isn't good enough. We have to be intensifying our investment in places our, in our universities, colleges and apprenticeships if we are to truly maximise the benefits of corporation tax. A lower level corporation tax has the potential for increased demand within our economy from uh, local companies growing and also more inward investment. But unless we can actually keep pace with that demand through su the supply chain in terms of talented young people, then we're not going to take full advantage of, of a lower level of corporation tax. So I am confident that as we move towards that lower level of corporation tax, the case for inv further investment in the skills budget will become even more uh, clear cut. And I certainly continue to, to make that case and will and we'll do so over the coming uh, months and years. I call Danny Kinnan. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and thank the Minister for his answer so far. But given that there's 
16,000 um, student places being cut. What is the Minister putting in place or what are his options to make sure that they don't fall into the neat category? Well, well, first of all, I mean, we, we don't have a, a plan B whenever we have a situation where there are uh, cuts in further education places. Because if I was to uh, divert resources into to, to, uh, funding a, a plan B, the wiser course of action would actually be just to, to do more in terms of, in terms of, of plan A. So th there are very real dangers if people do miss out in terms of further education places that they will have nowhere to go. And ultimately, this will become a, a, a cost burden in terms of social, social security and, and welfare. Uh, and so we need to be very mindful of the consequences of this. Now, that said, the, the 16,000 figure was a projection based upon a 10.8% cut uh, to my department, which was uh, passed on on a pro rata basis uh, to, to the colleges. We are now in somewhat of a different position uh, today, uh, with a, a, a lower reduction to my department's uh, budget. Uh, so we have to bottom out exactly what that means uh, for the FE sector uh, over, the, over the coming days. Um, I, I am currently working on a number of different options uh, which will hopefully try to avoid too much impact on, on the front line in terms of further education. But at this stage, it's going to be very difficult to avoid any cut in terms of the number of places av available. And that will be the first time, actually, and certainly in, in my experience, uh, if not longer, where we've actually seen a reversal in terms of provision of further education, which previously has always been open uh, to anyone in Northern Ireland to, to access courses. This will be the first time, potentially, we're, we're now going to be rationing access to courses. I think that's something we need to take uh, very seriously. And I call William Irwin. Uh, members will recall that in March last year I announced that the Minister of Education and I had commissioned a formal employer-led review of careers by an independent panel of experts building upon the work of the Employment Learning Committee and also the CBI. The expert panel has now reported. Uh, sound careers, education and guidance informed by the needs of the current and future labour market is critical to fully maximise our potential and the opportunity for economic growth. It is now more important than ever that our young people are equipped with the skills and the qualifications they need to take advantage of the new opportunities that the new corporation tax environment, for example, could afford. I welcome the findings of the review and there is broad agreement on the way forward. My department will shortly be publishing a joint strategic framework outlining the key actions and timelines for, for implementation. The new framework will also take account of the recommendations made in the Employment and Learning Committee's report following its extensive inquiry into careers and other recent publications from the CBI. Work has already started to improve support for careers using the web with a new homepage and updated online self-help support launched at the end of last year. In addition to the Northern Ireland Centre for Economic Policy, commissioned by my department, work has begun to produce a skills barometer to provide reliable and easier to understand labour market information and to highlight labour market opportunities and trends. Part of the development of careers will involve discussions with key stakeholders including parents and employers. This is to ensure that the new system supports young people and adults to fulfil their potential to contribute positively to their community and the Northern Ireland economy as well as meeting the needs of employers. I call William Irwin for supplementary. Can I thank the, the Minister for his response? The report states that work experience will be provided from P7. Can the Minister explain how he sees this recommendation working in practice, given the age issues and potential concerns of employers and others in the workplace? Well, that's one of the issues that we will be working through uh, as part of the implementation uh, plan, exactly what that means in practice. And obviously, the Department of Education, uh, with responsibility for children and young people at that age, will have a major say in exactly how that's taken forward. But I'm sure members are very mindful that we have a, a lot of work experience uh, people uh, in the building uh, both this week and next week, as this is often the time that schools across Northern Ireland uh, offer uh, or ask for such opportunities to be, ta to be taken up. And certainly, I am taking a number of students uh, this week and, and also uh, next week as well. Uh, but we are conscious that, that work experience is a very limited uh, snapshot of the world of work. Often, schools will only offer uh, that five-day window, uh, usually in, in the, the lower sixth uh, year. Uh, often that is maybe too late to inform young people of the range of choices that are out there uh, for them. And maybe sometimes young people would benefit from actually a wider range of possible experiences so they can sample uh, different areas of the world of work and decide what is most suitable for them. So those are some of the, the ideas I think lie behind that recommendation uh, within uh, the review. And I think we, we now need to look to see how practically we can put that into action. 
I called Patsy McGloom. Gurnham, I'm going to ask you on call your cash ever quick. Question number five. Uh, Currently employs 60 members of staff who have been specially trained or are professionally qualified to support people with disabilities. This includes the Employment Service, which has 42 staff who are employed in a specialist role across the network of 35 public offices. In addition to the specialist disability training, these staff are supported by three regional disability uh, employment managers and a team of six occupational psychologists. The disability employment managers have many years of experience working with disabled people and supporting employers who wish to recruit or retain employees who have a disability. The department's team of dedicated and professional occupational psychologists provide an employment assessment service to individual disabled clients who are seeking work or to those who are, who are, who are having difficulties uh, retaining work as a result of a disability. The psychologists also work with employers to provide assessments and recommendations for adjustments to support their disabled employees. As part of the disability team, there are nine advisors delivering the Access to Work programme, which is currently supporting 650 people with disabilities in employment. In addition to the 60 staff, the department provides specialist help and support to people with all types of disability who are in further or higher ed education, undertaking skills training or are availing of careers guidance. These specialist disability services are delivered in partnership with or, or on behalf of my department by organisations from the local disability sector. I call Patsy McGloan for supplementary. Uh, Mugget, last year, Corla, thanks very much. Mr Deputy Speaker, thanks very much to, to the Minister as well. Um, could I ask the Minister just um, the beneficial effects of these, which are, are there's no doubt about those, but could the Minister just quantify how many people are subsequently picking up and finding positions in, in full time or part time employment as a result of the intervention of the advisors and their staff? I am um, happy to, to write to the member and give him the, the precise figures uh, in this regard, but we are talking uh, in, the, in the considerable numbers of, of hundreds of people who are benefiting from the schemes that, that are uh, available. And the member, member will also wish to note that we have been working uh, over the past uh, 12 months, uh, and indeed longer, in terms of the development of a new employment and skills strategy for people uh, with disabilities. That is uh, currently being finalised by my officials, and we hope to commence uh, public consultation on that uh, within the next uh, number of weeks. And that is intended to, 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 to freshen our, our current offering, which is making a real difference, but clearly there is always the potential to do things better. And quite no notably, uh, given the, the title of the forthcoming uh, strategy, there is going to be a much higher focus around, around skills. I think it is also important that we recognise that people with disabilities have a lot to offer in terms of, of the workplace. This is not simply about employers doing some sort of sense of corporate res responsibility and giving an opportunity to someone with a disability. This is about employers actually reaching their full potential by fully availing of the talents that disabled people have. And just, be just because someone has a disability, that does not mean that they are not able to fully engage in the world of work and to be as productive, if not more so, in some contexts than, than, uh, than other work colleagues. So it's important that we do all we can to get the message out there about what can be done and the supports that are available available uh, to make a real difference to people's lives and also our local economy. I call Gregory Campbell. Hopefully the Minister will be in a position very shortly to make his announcement uh, on a forthcoming capital projects, including the Northern Regional College, if and when he does get to that point shortly, will he be able to utilise the services of disability specialist advisors in terms of the location and roads infrastructure and accessibility for any new structure? Well, we'll certainly uh, take on board uh, any advice that we can around the, the siting and, and design uh, of uh, buildings to make sure that they, they are as user-friendly as that they can. And we, we, we have already availed. I think it's uh, uh, Disabled Go who have advised us in terms of our existing footprint. I think they, they can, they've conducted an audit of all of our uh, further education estate and some valuable lessons uh, that were identified by them. And obviously, in terms of the more recent uh, uh, capital investment, uh, we take every step we can to, to ensure that we are fully uh, uh, disability compliant. And obviously, the Disability Discrimination Act uh, is, a, is a backstop in that regard to ensure that we, we, we do follow through with, with the rules, but um, we also recognise that there is a very proactive role and, and responsibility in ensuring that our buildings are fully disability compliant, which is to ensure that we can facilitate all of our potential customers in, in that regard. And obviously, within further education and also higher education, we have a very proud record of facilitating access for people with, with disabilities. 
Moving on, I call Stephen Mutre. Uh, the Southern Regional College is currently planning to take forward three major capital investment uh, projects at Adarma, Banbridge and Craigavon, respectively. The Craigavon project will establish a new state-of-the-art campus to replace the existing Lurgan and Portadown campuses. The work was originally planned to be delivered after the Armagh and Banbridge projects. However, I have been able to secure additional capital funding through Together Building a United Community and hope to deliver this work on a similar timescale as the other projects. The Southern Regional College has begun the process of identifying a design team to take forward all three developments, and the initial part of the exercise will be completed within the next two weeks. The appointment of the design team will be completed by the end of March 2015. Unlike the Armagh and Banbridge projects, which will be developed on the existing sites, a site has yet to be secured for the Craig Avon development. However, the College has completed a site options analysis. On the basis of this analysis and following liaison with Craig Avon District Council, a potentially suitable council-owned location has been identified. A pre-application discussion with the planning service regarding this site is due to take place this month, and depending on the outcome of this meeting, a decision on the next steps will be taken. Subject to securing an appropriate site, design work is expected to be completed in approximately nine months from April 2015, with the aim of awarding the construction contract during 2016. I call Stephen Mitri. Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for his very welcome response. Can he uh, ensure that discussions will take place with local businesses, namely from the manufacturing sector, the agri-food sector and the life sciences sector, to see that courses at the new centre will be tailored to meet the needs of the business? Yes, I am very happy to give the member uh, that, that assurance. And, uh, further, uh, further education has evolved very significantly over the past uh, decade and uh, are now very much focused upon the needs of, of the economy. Uh, they're there to provide uh, a skill solution and also a research and innovation solution uh, to, to local business. Uh, the the, the uh, emphasis within the curriculum has also moved much more towards uh, the, the needs of the local economy. Uh, as I've already mentioned about the uh, importance of the new strategies around apprenticeships and the forthcoming strategy on youth training and how further education will be a very key delivery partner in that regard. And obviously employers will be in the driving seat in relation to, the, to those strategies. And of course our capital design has to uh, follow suit in terms of ensuring that we actually deliver what the curriculum uh, it requires, not the other way around. I call Joanne Dobson. Can I also thank the, uh, the Minister for his answer so far. Can I ask specifically with regard to the news on the new campuses, will the impact on the recent budget cuts to his department, um, can he assure us that they will in no way specifically um, cause the ability of the colleges to staff these new bills once opened, that everything will proceed and the staffing levels will be, will be alert, permitted? Well, I think that the, probably the biggest challenge financially is the, the dip in the, in the capital uh, budget, and that is causing uh, some uh, degree of concern. But uh, members can take uh, consolation in that I have quite uh, consistently stated that I regard both the Southern Regional College and also the Northern Regional College areas as being priorities in terms of the further education estate. Um, they have not had the same degree of investment that some other regions have had over the past uh, number of years, so I am keen to progress these projects as, as best I can. And we will look to see what opportunities are out there uh, for uh, capital funding, and often doors open in capital uh, due to unforeseen circumstances elsewhere in, in budgets. So I, I, I am I remain optimistic that we will proceed with the capital builds in terms of all three within the SRC uh, jurisdiction. Um, the resourcing will be there to ensure that the, uh, the all three campuses are, are, are viable. Um, while we do have pressures in terms of the FE budget, and, and sadly there will be uh, some loss in terms, in terms of job roles uh, and job places, the, 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 the three campuses will require staff to ensure that we deliver the courses that they are designed uh, to, 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 uh, to facilitate. And, and in that context, I, I don't see the revenue budgets either uh, compromising the, the go-ahead of these projects. And that is the end of our period for listed, listed questions, and we now turn to topical questions. And I call Mickey Brady. The last concordia. Could I ask the minister for an update on the revised allocation to his budget for 2015-16? Well, um, 
as the, as the uh, member will be aware, the Finance Minister this morning uh, announced a uh, further allocation uh, of uh, £20 million to, to my budget or, um, depending on your perspective, uh, uh, the reallocation of money that was otherwise going to be cut uh, to, to the budget and also the receipt of another um, £13.5 million in terms of bids, either on a single uh, departmental basis or a joint basis uh, with um, other departments uh, from, from the change fund. Let me be very clear. I, mean, I do very much welcome uh, those uh, additional uh, allocations that have been um, made by the Finance Minister and agreed by, by the Executive. That said, we are st still facing a very challenging situation in terms of, of my budget, uh, and that will uh, continue to pose very real challenges and a real risk uh, of our inability uh, of, to provide and invest in the skills pipeline for the future of the Northern Ireland economy. And uh, we will have to see over the coming weeks how we can best mitigate the effect of those uh, to protect the front line as best as possible. I call Mickey Brady for supplementary. Thank the Minister for his answer. And could he outline uh, what discussions he's had with colleges and universities about protecting student numbers? Well, ultimately, the, the, the best route in terms of protecting student numbers is, it lies with the allocation that comes uh, to uh, my, my department. Um, any discussions we have with the universities and colleges is the fallback position as to how we best mitigate the effect of the allocations uh, that have, uh, have been made. But over the past number of weeks, I've had regular meetings with the vice chancellors and also the principals and also the chairs of the boards of the, the six uh, FE colleges and also colleges uh, NI. I'm seeing the two vice chancellors uh, tomorrow uh, to discuss the, the implications of the budget and, and uh, also meeting with the, the colleges uh, tomorrow evening uh, to discuss the budget as well as some other issues regarding the future of uh, community planning at a local government level. Uh, and uh, over the coming weeks, we will see exactly how we can agree a budget. Uh, certainly, it's my intention to protect the front line uh, as best as possible, uh, but in comments made to some of his colleagues er earlier on in, in question time, I made clear that there are choices to, to be made and that uh, some of the suggestions that the Members' Party are suggesting I do would mean money is taken away from the front line and would result in even steeper cuts in terms of places. Uh, so the Member may wish to reflect upon that with his colleagues. I call Stuart Dixon. Minister, can you tell the House what the effect on indeed the impact of the budget will be on the skills agenda for Northern Ireland? Um, thank the member for, for his question. Skills is the main driver of, of the transformation of, of our economy. Um, we need much more higher level skills and we also need to bring more and more people into the labour market. If we are to truly compete uh, with other regions and also to fully achieve our full potential, if we are to close our product, the product, productivity gap with the rest of the UK and also within the context of the European Union, then investing in skills is the main way in which we are going to do that. We also have the looming issue of the potential lower rate of, of cooperation tax, something I very much welcome. But there are major challenges ahead if the executive is going to be in a position to resource that um, in, in a couple of years' time. And the notion that we would take money out of the skills budget to fund a lower level of corporation tax, I don't think makes a lot of sense. Uh, if anything, we have to be investing further in, in skills uh, to make corporation tax a success. So there's a lot to play for uh, over the, the next uh, number of months around ensuring that we do, do the right thing in terms of our economy. That means investing in skills to ensure we, we, we fully reach our full potential. I call Stuart Dixon. Given that answer, Minister, how therefore are you going to protect investment in frontline skills? Well, it is going to be very difficult uh, to, to achieve that. Now, we are facing a, a slightly better situation than was set out in terms of the draft uh, budget. But potentially, we were talking about 16,000 places in further education and 1,000 places in, in, in universities. I have made clear that it is my intention uh, to protect the economy as best as I can uh, in those areas that are most relevant to the economy, though virtually everything my department does is relevant to the economy, and also to, to protect those who are, who are most vulnerable uh, in terms of service delivery of my, of my uh, department. I have indicated that I want to protect um, what we term as narrow STEM subjects in our colleges and universities, that's maths, physics, uh, computer science, engineering and life sciences. Uh, and also that we want to protect apprenticeships uh, and, uh, and youth training, we, and we have some uh, protection from the change fund in, in that regard. We are looking and discussing with the colleges and universities what alternatives are there in terms of finding efficiency savings, doing things differently, uh, addressing subsidies, um, 
different formats of spend regulation that may free up money that will allow us to preserve uh, a greater share of places in the front line than, than was otherwise the case. But those discussions have still to be bottomed out fully, and it, it may be about two weeks before we have a, a full picture in terms of what the budget means for this coming year. But we have to bear in mind as well that places are, are long-term investment, and uh, what happens in this budget uh, will, will be of interest to what happens in terms of the next four years as well. The two have to be seen in conjunction with one another. Moving on, I call Ducky Mackay. Can I ask the Minister for an update on the number of applications received for the European Social Fund uh, from the community and voluntary sector in particular, uh, and why he has limited the qualifications in this to level one? Well, well first of all, I think we have about um, in the region between 130 and 140 from memory applications that were received uh, to the, the European uh, Social Fund, and the, the, uh, the, the application process uh, closed on the, the 9th uh, of January, and we're working through those um, applications uh, as we speak. My, official, my officials are anyway. Um, it's important to bear in mind again that we are in, in, in difficult uh, financial times, but also that we want to make full use of the community and, and voluntary sector who are a very key delivery partner of, of, of government, and, and the European Social Fund is a very useful tool uh, in that regard in terms of creating opportunities for them to bring their skills uh, to bear in terms of making a difference to, 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 to people's lives. It's important that we also look at uh, duplication in terms of the provision of services, and we do see a, a natural division of labour where a greater focus is placed in terms of the community and voluntary sector around the level one qualifications and our further education sector and others focus around level two and beyond. And that's not going to be an absolute uh, this, this, this distinction, and in particular, um, we have made clear that uh, ESF bids in relation to disability uh, will go beyond uh, le level one, and there may well be other situations where that applies uh, as well. But we are trying to, to make the best use of the resources available uh, to us, in both financially and also taking, taking in, into account the skills that are there in terms of, of the community and voluntary sector, where they can actually make the biggest impact. I call Ducky Mackay. I think the problem with this approach, Minister, is that a lot of community and voluntary uh, servers find themselves locked out by the way the criteria has been set, and you'll be well aware of the concerns outlined by NICFA and indeed Could the member ask the question, please? Uh, uh, in the community and voluntary sector, important to know where I represent. To ask the question, uh, can I ask the Minister, can he estimate how many projects could close and how many jobs could be lost in the community and voluntary sector by his approach? And is it more about shuttling money? out of the community and voluntary sector and into his own department than anything else? First of all, we're not shoving money out of the community and voluntary sector into my department. There are some schemes in my department uh, that are going to have to close because of lack of resources. Um, we can't renew them uh, as we had maybe planned because of the, uh, the budget uh, cuts and they were coming to the, the end of, the first, of their first phase in terms of March uh, of this year. It's also, also worth noting that the European Social Fund itself is actually a bigger pot uh, of resource available than was the case previously. So there's actually more money on the table from the ESF under this round than there was previously. So that's also good news. But I have to be very frank to the member. Where the biggest threat uh, to delivery of the ESF programme li now lies is with uh, match funding. And one of the consequences that has arisen from the delay over approval of the DSD's uh, regeneration bill has been to knock back the transfer of, of functions uh, from DSD to local government. So a lot of organisations now find themselves in a very confused situation as to how they're going to get the match funding to access the ESF, because we have, we have a situation where uh, DSD are hanging on to powers for an additional 12 months, uh, and councils that were planning to have powers from the 1st of April are now having to wait a further 12 months, and uh, a lot of uh, bodies are now finding themselves caught between those two stools on how to get uh, additional funding, and neither the councils or DSD are, are in a position to give a, a degree of certainty around match funding. I call Lord Moore. Thank you, uh, Deputy Speaker. Can I ask the Minister today, can he update the House in relation to the provision of further education courses for those and qualifications for those with disabilities, and what progress has been made so far? Well, this is something the member has raised on a, on a number of occasions, and he will be aware that we have conducted an audit uh, of further education uh, provision um, across uh, the, the, F, the FE sector. 
Uh, obviously, it, it, this ties in with the, um, the previous question as well about how best the European Social Fund can be deployed uh, to assist uh, both with Level 1 FE uh, at, a, at a general sense, but also to assist those uh, with, with disabilities. So a partnership approach between the community and voluntary sector and uh, further education is, is very important uh, in this regard. Also, um, the, the issue about uh, learning and disability transitions has been discussed at the Bamford Ministerial Group uh, subgroup of the Executive, and that we are looking to do a proper uh, gap analysis and to see where uh, departments can be more proactive in terms of providing uh, services, uh, particularly around those areas where people are falling between gaps, uh, of, which are not of their making, but are more a reflection of the way government is, is structured. I call Lord Morrow. Thank the Minister for his reply. Uh, I understand that the Dell Committee has uh, commissioned a report, or a report has been commissioned on this. When do you expect to receive that report, or have you received the report? Well, the the Dell Committee is currently conducting an inquiry into the, the, these issues, and I, I'm certainly very happy um, uh, that to, to, to assist them in that regard, and certainly would recognise their initiative in this issue, because I think it is an, an important one. Um, that the timescales of, of that work lie outside my uh, di direct control, uh, but work is still happening in parallel with that. I want to give the member an assurance that we are not sitting back waiting for that report uh, before any action is taken on, on these issues. Um, we are pushing um, with ministerial colleagues behind uh, the scenes at, at the executive to see what more can be done around uh, an action plan. And indeed, <coughs> a, a draft has been uh, commissioned uh, already in, in, in that regard. I think the biggest challenge that we face now is, is one of, of resources, because for far too many uh, departments and agencies, this type of activity is seen as, the, as a soft touch. Uh, whereas it should be viewed as being one, part of their core uh, service delivery. And particularly, we need to see a reconciliation where issues are unclear between which department has responsibility, that someone must step up and, and take responsibility for delivery in that regard. I call Sean Rogers. Mr. Speaker. The Minister, the Department acknowledges that, in, in, particularly in rural areas, job opportunities are likely to be fewer, and the task of supporting needs population is even a bigger challenge. Could I ask you what the Department is doing uh, with specific programmes or even interventions designed to deal with youth, youth unemployment in rural areas? Well, well first of all, uh, it is worth uh, referencing uh, to, uh, the fact that we now have the Steps to Success uh, uh, programmes operational, and we have three contract areas across uh, Northern Ireland uh, with lead contractors and also a, a supply chain. Uh, one of the key design aspects of this is that no person should be left behind. Um, there's not a situation where providers are going to be permitted to pick off those that are easier to help, whether it's in terms of skill, qualifications or geography. We have to ensure that we are developing a tailored plan to everyone, so we will be picking up people from that rural context uh, to ensure they can avail of opportunities. It's also worth noting that in terms of the European Social Fund, unlike the, the previous uh, round of applications, that this time there is uh, a, a stronger geographical uh, aspect to ensure that there is proper coverage in terms of the type of schemes we want to see rolled out across all of Northern Ireland, and that includes uh, capturing people uh, from uh, rural areas. And often the ESF programmes are very tailored towards addressing youth unemployment and those who fall into the, into the need category. I call Sean Rogers. Thanks, Thanks Minister, for your, for your answer. Minister, how e easy is it for councils or for local, provi local um, providers to customise the, sh the department's programmes to suit very localised needs? Well, the, the member's question is in some sense timely. Um, tomorrow evening I'm hosting a dinner between the new uh, chief executives of the 11 uh, district councils and also the, the principals of the, uh, the, the six uh, further education colleges to talk through uh, some of the skill uh, re requirements uh, that uh, exist in different, different areas and how uh, the FE colleges can be uh, more fully part of local economic plans and also part of the community planning uh, infrastructure. And also, as we look to design uh, some of our programmes, particularly the uh, youth system of youth training, we are very mindful of different variations across uh, Northern Ireland. And again, the councils and the FE colleges will be key partners in terms of how we try to put in place a different focus to different, different parts of Northern Ireland. So there's some opportunities in that regard to achieve what the member is asking. I call George Robinson. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. De Deputy Speaker. Uh, could I ask the Minister to outline if the Northern and North West Regional Colleges have attracted improved enrolment figures for the 2014-2015 academic year? 
Well, I don't have the, the figures uh, to hand exactly uh, who is up and who is down, but the member will be aware that we have had a, a certain fallback in terms of the number of enrolments in terms of the FE sector. Now, that can almost entirely be explained uh, due to changing uh, demographics in terms of the, the, the numbers of, of young people. There is also an issue as well about uh, some of our uh, schools hanging on to our young, young people uh, longer than they, they should be, uh, because they have a, an interest in maintaining their enrolments in relation to money. That is not always in the interest of a young person uh, who uh, may well be better suited uh, to the environment in an FE college. So some issues there we also need to bottom out. And that is the end to questions to the Minister of Employment and Learning.